This tutorial is on how to make a little woven pouch like this that requires no sewing and it has no seams. So the items that you will need is a piece of cardboard. This one here is five by seven inches, a pair of snips to cut your threads, a marker to draw your template, a little comb um, to push down your weaving. If you don't have a little comb like this, you can use like a fork. Some um, pins with a fairly large head and you can use a variety of different needles to do your weaving. And some, I'm using wool yarn. I'm only using two colors because I wanted some different texture and also it, it makes the yarn a little bit thicker. And then for my warp threads, I'm just using like a baker's twine. The next step is to draw the lines on the cardboard, so the template of the pouch shape. So the first line is the inside top of the pouch. And um, this distance here is about four inches and a quarter. So I just marked it and drew a line there. So on the other side is where you're going to do the flap and you know you can draw this freehand or you could take a piece of paper and then fold it in half and then draw the shape of your flap and this will help you get something that's a little bit more symmetrical and then what I also did was I marked how tall I wanted the flap to be and I'm not sure if you could see this, but I did a little mark here on the edge, which is basically the end of where that um, inside part is. I can make it a little bit more noticeable. And then what I'm going to do is mark, match those marks there because this is how tall I want the flap to be. So I'm going to do that on both sides. And then I'm going to trace this. And you can make this however, whatever size and shape you want it to be. Okay. So now the next step is to add the pins. One of the questions that I kept getting was, should you have an even amount of pins or an odd number of pins? And the answer is, whatever amount of pins you place here, so let's say you have 30 pins, on the other side, there should also be 30 pins. So it doesn't matter if it's an even or odd number, as long as it matches the other side. I'm putting it in and they're going on an angle. And as you can see on the other side, they don't show up. So just push it down and then on an angle so that it doesn't go through the other side. And one of the things that I was a little concerned about when I was doing this was would my tension be okay? And surprisingly, the tension was really great on this. So just Keep placing the pins all the way around. And then when you finish placing the pins all the way around, count how many pins you have, and that is how many you should be placing along this straight edge here. Finish putting the pins on the curved part, and I've counted the pins, and there's 36 pins, and I have them at a distance of, I want to say, like a little bit bigger than an eighth of an inch. I would say less than a quarter for sure. Um, so I just kind of gave them a really nice sort of distance in, in between. And this, this part here 
it's just going to determine how loose and how tight your weave is. So if you want a tighter weave, then do something similar to mine. And if you want a looser weave, if you're using like really thick yarn or thick fabric, then I would, you know, leave a little bit of distance in between so it's not so tight. So what I'm going to do now is place 36 pins along this side here as well. Just squeeze in this one last pin. And if they're not perfectly straight, it's it's fine. It's not gonna really affect the weaving that much. Before I start wrapping the warp thread, so the warp threads are the threads that go up and down, I'm going to um, snip the corners here just a tiny bit on both sides. And the reason why I'm doing that is so that the threads at the end have a little bit of a hook so they don't slide off. Um, I didn't really experience them, I didn't really experience them moving that much, but that's just like a little precaution. When I start wrapping the baker's twine, what I'm trying to do too is I'm trying to keep the thread attached to the spool and not cut any of it off so that when I'm wrapping the um, cardboard itself, I'm using one continuous um, piece of thread and I'm not cutting and starting. So um, keep that in mind. So don't cut the thread, just keep them attached. How I started was I just made myself a little kind of like a, a slip knot. So I just first do a little knot and then I went around the first pin here and you can pull it up a tiny bit if it's easier to get so you're gonna go around that first pin and then just tighten that knot and if you want I would do like a, a second knot just to make sure it's on there really tight and leave a fairly like long tail like you can even leave one that's longer than that and then what you're going to do with this tail at the end is you're just going to weave it into the piece so it's not so don't don't trim that so what you're going to do now with these warp threads is you're going to wrap around the inside part and then so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go down and that little notch that i cut i'm going to make sure that my thread is attached to that and you want to um, not pull it too tight that you're warping the cardboard. You just want to make sure that it's firm. So I'm going to go around the first loop there and then I'm going to flip it like that. And then I'm going to pull it firmly and then go around the next pin. So from left to right. And then as I pull down, you hear this clicking and that's pretty much what holds the threads in and keeps your tension. So I'm going to flip it around and make sure that your threads here are just right beside each other. Make sure that over here they don't overlap. And then here you're going to go from left to right because you want to kind of keep going away from you. And if you want to here you can kind of move them so that they are straight and parallel. So I'm going to keep doing that until the whole thing is covered and then I'm going to show you how to end off. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that. So let me show you again. Over here I'm going from left to right because I'm going in this direction. And you're going to end it just like the way you started it. So I'm going to pull this pin up a little bit wrap around it okay and then I'm going to snip the thread and I'm going to go underneath the string the last string there I'm going to go underneath like that, and then I'm going to take this tail and put it through this hole. And what I'm doing is 
essentially just creating a knot. So just tying a knot there. And you could do a second one if you like. So it's underneath like that. And then the tail goes through the hole. And then you're just going to pull up like that. And that will help tighten it. You can push the pin down. And that's it. So now you are ready to start weaving. And if you want, you can go in and, you know, adjust these a little bit. Make sure they're all kind of nice and parallel. And I find they kind of straighten out as you start weaving. So don't really fuss about that too much. Okay, so now we're going to start weaving. I cut the yarn about the length of my arm. I feel like that's a good length to work with. And then when I thread it, I just have one sort of short side and one long side and I don't do a knot. So when I'm starting on the weaving, you could go around the edge here, but then what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with sort of like a curved shape. And so I wanted to kind of maintain the sort of um, parallel weaving. So I'm gonna start um, right here at the sort of um, highest point of the curve. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sort of start weaving and then just kind of building up till I get to um, this point here. And I will weave the flap on its own before I start to weave this side here. When I'm weaving, I don't create knots. What I'm going to do is, um, as you can also see here, I'm actually gonna go under and over um, two strands rather than every single one because that would just take too long. And so I'm gonna just start by going under and over just like a couple, just at the front here. And then I'm gonna build my way up to um, the other areas. So I'm gonna go under and over and then I'm going to pull this through and I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail here and what I'm going to do and I'll show you in a second is I'm going to weave some of this um, underneath so that's really how you deal with starting um, a new piece of thread and also ending so I'm not tying any knots or anything and they just kind of get um, woven into the piece itself. I find it's a really good idea to use something like um, a comb. It helps to push threads down. Um, you can do it with your fingers, but it just sort of takes a lot of time. So now for the next row, I'm gonna go underneath the, um, the one that's beside it and then just go across. And I find like the beginning, like here, it's actually a little hard to kind of start because it's super tight and you're kind of getting into, you know, very small spaces. I'm just gonna lift this up here. And every time I do a row, I'm going to um, pick up like a new um, warp thread. So you can see I kind of ended here. So when I go back that direction, I'm gonna pick up these warp threads and then I'm gonna keep doing that back and forth. And you don't want to pull these threads too tight because you want to keep the tension, um, you know, kind of even.
And I find using a needle, like the one that I'm using, is a lot easier than using like a, a, a little small heddle because you have to really kind of get underneath the threads and I just find it's a lot easier. Okay, so I'm gonna just build this up a little bit and then I'll show you when I need to um, add another new piece of uh, yarn. So you can see now that I've done a little bit more weaving and I've, I'm have i running out of um, yarn. So I'm going to weave until the tail is getting smaller. Or sometimes, you know, if I'm at a good point in the weaving, I just snip it. So that's what I think I'm going to do for this part here. Uh, maybe I'll just do a couple more. Okay, so I pull it through like this. And I'll show you in a second like um, how I weave this through so that um, it doesn't um, it doesn't show up in the piece so I'm going to thread my new piece of yarn so I got my new piece now and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to weave under and over essentially in the same spot as the end part of my uh, tail and I usually do it about an inch or so. So I'm going to go in the same spot. So I'm not going to go the opposite. I'm going to go the same. So these are over. And so I'm going to also be over here. And then I'm going to come across. And same thing. I'm going to leave a little bit of a tail here. And so they overlap those areas and then when you go to weave the next row which I'll show you they pretty much kind of disappear so once I've done a little bit more weaving up here I'm going to show you how I hide these tails um, and then you could see how uh, you can do that um, some people actually because you've left an, enough of a long tail here where it overlaps sometimes people just sort of clip it right there and usually I like to kind of um, weave it into the piece here a little bit just so that I have a little bit more security. Okay, so I'm gonna just weave across here and then I'm gonna show you how I hide the tails. So I wanted to show you how to hide these tails. Um, a lot of the times, um, you know, I like to do them as I weave because sometimes they get in the way. Um, sometimes people leave it to the end to do. So I'm going to use a, a more finer darning needle um, just so that I can get through those areas a little bit better. And I'm going to thread it. And then what I'm going to do is put the needle right through the weaving, just one of these areas here. And you can come up at any point you want. So I'm just going to come up at that point. I'm going to pull this through. And then pull it down like that. And then I'm going to take my snips. And then just snip it. So you can see the tail is gone. And because I wove it in this area a little bit, I just feel like it's just a bit more secure than just snipping it right there. I mean, like I said, some people do that and it's totally fine, but just for me, I like to kind of do that a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weave a little bit more so that I can kind of tuck these tails. I like to kind of go upwards, um, but you can go downwards too if you want. And then you could see that I wove a few more rows in that spot where I've overlapped the two um, tails and you could hardly ever, you could hardly see them, especially when you push it down with the comb. 
Okay, so I'm gonna just continue weaving till I get to the end of the flap, but then I'm gonna show you how I start on the other side. I've completed weaving the flap and I've tucked in all of my tails so it's nice and clean. My next step now is to go from the back and wrap around and weave to the other side. That's how you get the no seams on the piece and um, it doesn't require any sewing. I'm going to finish this row. Pull that through. I'm going to flip around to the other side. And as you can see, there's nothing that has started. And I'm going to start by going under, over, under, over. I've gotten to the end of the row on this one side. The next step is to flip it over and this start over here. And um, I'm going to keep repeating this, completing each row and then flipping it around and then wrapping it. And then just keep doing that until I reach the bottom and I'll come back later and I will show you how I finish the edging and how I finish the piece. When I'm working, I like using this needle. Um, the plastic is nice because it's a bit flexible, but as I get closer to the bottom edge of the pouch, the eye is too big. I switched over to this needle because the eye is a little bit more slender and when you get to this area and you're going under, over, under, over, I find it really helps to put the needle kind of on an angle like this to pull through. It just makes it a lot easier. I'm going to try and weave in as close as possible. That way I have a, a really nice um, woven bottom to the pouch. I think this is going to be my last row because it's getting really tight to get in there. So I'm just going under all the individual stitches. I finished the piece and I have this leftover bit of the um, yarn that I was working on. So I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to run it up. And pull it through. And snip it as close as possible. And that's it. That's how you finish it. We have um, one last thing to do to the weaving before we remove the pins and take it off the cardboard. When I wrapped the um, warp threads around the pins, I created a loop. And if I were to go under over each individual warp thread rather than two, I wouldn't have this loose loop. So if I were to take this off the cardboard without doing this next step, all the threads will come undone and the piece will fall apart. What I'm going to do is take sort of like a finer darning needle and I'm going to run this blue thread 
just through each of the loops. Okay, and if you find that it's easier to lift up the pin um, while you're doing it, then, then feel free to do that. And this part's a little bit tricky, but it will work. And same thing, leave a little bit of a tail that you're going to weave into the piece. So I'll just lift up a little bit. And I'm just putting my needle inside each of the loops. And this is how I finish the edge of the piece. And it prevents the piece from coming apart. And like I said earlier, if you were to weave under and over every single strand, you wouldn't have to do this next step the loops would have been connected to your first threads. And it's much easier to do it um, now before you pull the, the pins out. Because if you pull out the pins, then the thread can um, come undone very easily. Okay, so I'm gonna um, do that right now and then I'll show you what it looks like. So I flipped it over and I'm continuing doing the same thing on the flap of the pouch. So going through the loops the same way. And back now to where I started, I'm going to overlap just a tiny bit just by maybe a couple of threads. It's always good to overlap when you're ending. That way you're not left with like a, a tail that is kind of loose. Okay, so that is, I'm gonna stop here. And same thing, I'm going to Go down through the weave with my needle. Pull that piece down and then clip it. And I'll do the same thing for this tail. And now it's time to take it off the cardboard. At this point is where you can start removing the pins. Which is always an exciting part of the process because you know you are done and you get to see what it looks like. And you can see the piece is perfectly fine. Nothing is coming apart. There you go. There's the flap. Now we're ready to take the cardboard out. I find that it's helpful to fold it a tiny bit just to kind of make it easier to pull out. So there you have it. Here's the pouch. And here is the side seam. And this is the reason why you don't have to sew it because we wove it from the front to the back. And you can see that it's, it's pretty good. It's not loose at all. To finish it off, you could put a loop on here and sew on a button, and that will give you a nice closure. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.